Welcome to Lipper Technical Training Institute. My name's Chet Dellenbeck. Today we're going to be talking about TSB 146-001-2022. This refers to an inverted Schwintech slide-out system. This does not affect the standard system, just the inverted. This TSB affects units that were manufactured between October 2021 and January 6th of 2022. To identify the systems that fall underneath a TSB, what you're going to do is go inside the unit and you're going to be looking for the variant code sticker. The variant code sticker is going to be directly below the motor notch on the inside edge of that H column facing the inside of the unit. Take your ca camera, cell phone, whatever you have, snap a picture, take a picture of that variant code sticker, and at the very bottom when you turn it to read it, the bottom left hand corner will be DOM, Data Manufacturer. Once again, the data manufacturer we're looking for is October 1st, 2021 through January 6th of 2022. So let's talk about how we're going to get reimbursed for this. First things first, we pay five hours for the entire system, 2.5 hours per column. You are going to have to do this procedure on both columns. Now, once the repair has been done, the slide out system has been reinstalled into the coach, we are gonna need some pictures. The first thing we're gonna need is the VIN number for the unit. The second thing we're gonna need is the data manufacturer for each one of those columns. I suggest taking this before you reinstall that column into the unit. The last thing we're gonna need is you're gonna to need to run that slide out out about six inches, and you're gonna measure from the face of the gear rack to the outside edge of that H column on all four corners. Then you're gonna run it all the way out. Then you're gonna repeat this measurement, ensuring that the system is within specifications. Two and a half inches, plus or minus an eighth inch is the tolerance that we need for the system to function. Once you have provided all of this information to us, we can move forward with reimbursement. The tools that you need for this procedure, you're gonna need the appropriate bits, a tape measure, a battery powered drill, speed square for marking your gear racks, the appropriate uh, PPE, safety glasses, earplugs. You may need a pair of snap ring pliers if the V rollers are not attached to the bearing blocks. You're gonna need something to mark the gear rack with. I've got a Sharpie in this case. Uh, you may need a pick tool, a flat blade screwdriver, a file, you will need this for deburring. You're gonna need a pop riveter. Also, don't forget, you will also need a chop saw or miter saw to be able to cut those gear racks down to size. There are three different parts kits available for this TSB. The parts kits that are available are going to be determined by the cutout on the end of the gear rack. This is a standard 1.56 inch notch. This would go over your exterior fascia. There's also a 1.75 inch notch. These are gonna be 38 inches long. You're going to have to cut them down to size and you wanna make sure you cut the non-notched end. Now, there's also a 1.56 inch notch that it has double. So you've got one on this end and one on this end. Those will not need to be cut. Those are 32 inches long. In addition to the gear racks, you're also going to get a bearing block kit. Now this whole kit needs to be installed in the system for this TSB. You're gonna get an upper bearing block. With the upper bearing block, you're gonna have a shoe with the foam pads on the sides. It may be installed like this one is, or it may be loose in the kit. You're also going to get a lower bearing block kit. This has to be installed, and once again, that shoe's either gonna be installed or it's gonna be loose. You're gonna get four spur gears, four foam plugs, uh, fixed side and float side rivets, as well as your motor retention screw. Now we're ready to cut our gear racks. You, what you want to do is take your existing gear racks, you're gonna measure those, and you're gonna transfer the measurement to your new gear racks. What you wanna do is you wanna measure from the notched end over to the non-notched end. You're gonna to wanna to cut this end off. And then you're simply gonna take your Sharpie and mark 
where these are located. Once you have those marked, take a straight edge, put it up here like this, and then go ahead and mark it. This is going to ensure that you have a nice straight cut on this. All right, so now that we have everything marked, what we need to do is just put on our personal protection equipment, put your, your eyes on, put your earplugs in, and then we're gonna take the gear racks, we're gonna take them over to the chop saw, and I'll meet you at the chop saw. Okay, so now we're at the chop saw. First thing we're gonna do is come down Make sure we're in the right location where our cut needs to be. We're going to bring the clamp over to secure the gear rack in place so we don't have any concerns. Now I have everything clamped, everything's nice and stable. Remember when you use a chop saw, when you bring it down and you're through cutting, to let go of the trigger, let the chop saw stop before you lift it back up. All right, so we've cut the lower. Now we'll proceed to cut the other three gear racks. Make sure that you're gonna to have to cut all four gear racks to match the size of the unit you're working on. All right, so now we have everything cut. We're gonna go ahead, take our file, and we're gonna deburr these edges. Now that we have this one deburred, we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process on all the other gear racks that we cut. You also want to check the notched end to make sure that there are no burrs there. Any burrs that are there need to be removed because they can damage the shoe. Okay, so now that we have everything cut, we're gonna move to assembly. One thing you wanna do with this is you wanna make sure after you deburr this that you tap, out, tap it out. You don't want any debris trapped inside the gear rack. So the next step is we're gonna take the foam plugs we're going to insert them into this opening. This is where a hook tool or a pick tool will come in handy. Push it in there. And then you can use the back of the pick tool or hook tool to press it in. And you want this as flush as possible. There's one that will go ahead. This one's already been cleaned out, nothing inside of it. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. Simply press it in. Once we have it started, we use the hook tool to press it the rest of the way into it. This is the H column that we're going to use. We're gonna put it right back in the existing H column because there is no damage to this. We will also need the torque shaft. So with the torque shaft, the easy way to identify which side is the top is where these crimps are or these stakes. We're going to use that to go ahead and start assembling this system. Now, a couple things to keep in mind before you get started. First thing is, make sure on your spur gear that that ring is always facing down toward the V-roller and it's assembled like this. But also, we want to check the top edge of that shoe and I'm simply going to have a screwdriver here. This one's a little high, so I'm just going to push down on that tab. Make sure that's nice and flush. If that tab is sticking up when you assemble it into the gear rack, you'll actually break your shoe. All right, so we're good to go there. I'm going to insert the spur gear into here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to align this, align the torque shaft with the spur gear. There we go, got it in there. And I'm gonna slide this up on. All right, then the next step is to repeat it on the lower. Once again, making sure, and this is a good shot where you can actually see those two tabs. These are nice and flush. You wanna make sure that these tabs are flush when, when you install this. All right, so we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now I've got my upper and lower uh, bearing block assembly on. I'm ready to go ahead and install it in the column. 
So to do this, I need to flip it around like this. And then I'm simply going to hold the upper, slide it into the, the gibbs, slide the lower into the gibbs, and now it's in here. All we got to do is add our rivets and we can move on to the next portion. All right, so now we have the bearing blocks in place. What we're going to do is we're going to peel the seal carefully off. This is where a screwdriver can come in handy so that you can carefully access where the rivets go. All right, so once I get that peeled back, now you can see where the hole for the rivet is. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to align my bearing block and set my rivet in there. Once I have it in place, I'm simply going to press it into place, put the seal back down, flip it over, and do the opposite side as well. On this one, I have that rivet there still, so I'm just going to remove that because that's the old rivet. Once that's out of the way, take the plastic rivet, insert it into the hole. That locks that bearing block into position, and then I'm going to repeat the process on the upper side of this, and then this one's ready to have the gear racks installed. Now that the float side is done, we're going to move to the fixed side. With the fixed side, what we're going to use instead of plastic rivets are aluminum. So we'll peel back the seal. I've already got this one close to being aligned. So we'll just drop that in. Take our rivet, pop riveter, drop it in here. Give it a couple squeezes. There we go. Put the seal back on and then we'll repeat it on the lower piece. So peel the seal back, locate the hole, align, get everything aligned. Set the rivet, All right, put the seal back on, and now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the gear racks. So now we're ready to install the gear racks. The easy way to do this is to face the column away from you. Start with your lower gear rack, align it with the shoe, slide it into position, there we go, just like that. You may need an extra set of hands for this, and we're going to align the upper as well. Now once we have these, all we're simply going to do is turn the gear rack until both of these ratchet. Now both of these are skipping, so I just grab them. Oop. That does happen, so if that does happen, just go ahead back it off again so they both ratchet grab them both at the same time wiggle and slide them into place once they are in place you want to go ahead and you want to measure from your column to the top of each one of these to ensure that they are equal distance and properly timed all right so now we have the gear racks timed all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this down I'm actually going to set it here like this, slide the gear racks over about halfway. All right, once that is done, now we are ready to install the motor and the coupler. On this one, the, the motor retention screw was put back in place, so all we're going to do is remove this because we're going to replace it with a new one. So now we're going to go ahead and install the motor and the coupler. I'm going to take the coupler, drop it into place, get it set. I'm going to insert the motor. One key thing to keep in mind with the motor is where the wire harness is located. You want the wire harness right on that inside edge. All right. In order to align this, you can turn this to get it to drop in. There we go. And then I'm simply going to turn the gear rack until I get it where I want it, push it into place, take my new motor retention screw. Now I'm going to start that. And drive it into place. Now we're ready to reinstall. You want to make sure that you do this on all 
columns. So you've, you'll have two columns. You'll need to do this procedure on both to get them ready for reinstallation. If you have any questions or concern, please don't hesitate to contact Lippert Support. Thank you very much for your time. You have a wonderful day.